Okay, you ready? So you're gonna be, you have been working on uh, chapter six, hopefully. We're gonna finish it up. Uh, some stuff that we have on chapter six. So, so uh, some of the things that we want to add to what we had so far is uh, we want to learn how to do uh, formatting because. Uh, when you are doing your payment uh, uh, thing, the interest and payment, then the columns were not all lined up. It would uh, shift to the right or left. Uh, and then uh, some uh, numbers that we were putting, they were not in line in either. So that's part of the formatting. Now that we're writing to a file, we want to be sure that it's going to be formatted. Question? I have a question. Yes, what's the question? Oh, while we're doing that, uh-huh. Um, uh, are we going to have the sample test um, at the bottom of the CPU file? To this, uh, whatever you have on your screen, whatever is on the file, I'm going to do it myself. So if you're doing, uh, if you're writing to a file, don't worry about it. I'm going to be doing it myself anyway. Oh. So you don't have to worry about that. If you have anything on the screen, yes. Okay, one of the things that you have, uh, most of you, have been using was to uh, do the output uh, for the decimal points. So we were using the fixed show point and precision. So we can use the same thing for our file. Now we used to do it on the C out. Now we can do it in uh, out stream. Yes, question? So precision two means what? Two decimal points. So it would uh, show the two decimal point. Uh, so when we say fixed, that is going to uh, basically set F means it's going to set set and flag. So if you're taking an assembly language or anything like that, we have some bits that we can set the flag. So if it's on, that flag is going to be on. If it's off, that flag is going to be off. So we have certain flag here that we can turn on and off. And the program is going to be looking at it constantly. So if I set it one time, it's going to be throughout the program. And of course, I can go and unset it. Uh, we're going to see how we're going to do that. So we put it on the, the uh, upstream, stream. Uh, so we can uh, set it as iOS uh, colon colon fixed. So that's going to create a fixed point notation versus the other one. So we have a, a show point. That means it's going to show the point even there is no zeros in there. Uh, so 6 would show as a 6.00. These are the ones that are available, uh, and of course we got a little more than that. So the fixed scientific show point, uh, show pause is going to show the positive sign. So sometimes you have numbers, we want to show uh, plus or minus uh, in front of it, no matter if it's positive or not. By default, there is not going to be any sign for the positive, we're going to show only the negative sign. But if you want to show the positive and negative, we're going to do the show pause. Uh, then we can do a right justify and left justify. That's going to be very handy. For example, in Excel, the numbers are going to be right justify, the strings are left justify. We can rearrange it any way we want. So all the columns that we are creating, we can uh, make it you know, all lined up. So there is another thing called the set widths or we can put the uh, width uh, in there. Uh, so either we can set it through the other stream or see out, that's gonna set four, or we can put it inside uh, the uh, extraction code. So for now, we're gonna set the width for the four. That means this seven is gonna be uh, four, and instead of one character, it's gonna be four character. Now we're gonna do the right or left, that's how it's going to happen. So if I do a justify right, 
is going to have three spaces on seven. If I justify the left, it's going to be seven and three after. If we set it too low, it's going to display it anyway. So if I, in this case, I have a width three uh, and I have a bigger than three, uh, then it's going to show that. It's not going to truncate it. It's not going to. Uh, it's not going to hide any character. So if it's more than that, it's going to show. So we got to put the highest one that uh, we have. So the key here is the entire item is always output. So if we set it in a part of the program, we don't want it uh, for the rest of the program, we can do an unset. That is going to be for any ones that we set so far. So we set it uh, the width for four. We can go on back and uh, the, you know, the, I mean, the left justify, right justify. We can unset it. So the mallet operators uh, in the uh, member function, we can actually put it inside the extraction uh, uh, site. So we can use it at that time only. So it doesn't set the whole C out or out stream. Uh, so we can put it like this. So we can put set W4, set W6, set W4, and so on. Of course, I'm missing a 20 here somewhere. It's supposed to be a 20 over here. So it's doing the set W4 for 10, then set W4 for another 20, and then set W6 for 30. And because they are right justify, it's going to have those spaces and this. So set W4 is going to give me two spaces before 10, right here, and set W4 is supposed to have a 20 over here, it's going to give me two spaces before 20, and set W6 is going to give me four spaces before 30. So if I'm creating uh, columns, these are going to be all lined up. Remember, uh, when I'm uh, printing things in the column, the first uh, nine digits is the single digits, and then they're going to be two digits, so everything is going to be shifted for one character. Now I can set it for two or three or four. Now it doesn't matter if it's a single digit or the two digit or even three digits, they are all going to come up in a one line. So most of you know about the set precision. Uh, you have used it in your previous uh, program for the C out. Uh, so we're going to set it uh, for two to show two decimal points. So we're going to create it as a fixed show point, and then we're going to put a two. What is the show point for? What's going to happen if I don't have a show point? What I mean? If it's not, if it doesn't have any decimal point, it's not going to show it. The show point is going to show it. So ten. It's going to show as a 10.00. That's the show point for. So we need the pound include IO manip, uh, and of course we're going to need uh, using name space STD standard. Any questions on those? Uh, we're moving on to the next topic. Do we have any question on the formatting? So moving forward, all your outputs should be formatted correctly. Okay, next we're talking about uh, passing files uh, to the functions. Remember, we do not pass the whole file. We're just going to be passing the name of the file. There is a difference between saying this name belongs to an address of a file somewhere or this name is actually a value. For that reason, we're going to be using the ampersand, meaning that this is referring to something else. This is, doesn't have a value by itself. Of course, it has uh, some addresses in there. That address is not a value for this one. We are going to use that one to point it to somewhere else. Okay? So we can pass an input and output the file as
as a parameter to a function, but we have to have those ampersand. So how do we find out that we are the end of the file? There is two ways to find out. One is that there is a character. We have a character at the end of the line. We have a character at the end of the file. Those are not visible to us, but it is there. We can actually uh, check for those. Those. Another one is using uh, this fo this format that is going to be reading till there is nothing left. So if I'm reading, or I'm reading for names, or I'm reading for, uh, you know, uh, let's say I'm reading for first name or last name or something like that, I can keep reading till I'm done. So this is going to fail when I get to the end of the file. So I can have in a stream first name. I can have in a stream some numbers. So as far as I have those coming in, then I, I can keep going. So the way that's going to happen is while in a stream uh, we're going to have next, so it's going to read next, which is what? The type of double, so it's going to keep reading the double, it's going to uh, add to the sum, it's going to add the count, and then it's going to do the average. So this is going to uh, stop. Remember, in the, in the computer, it doesn't know where the things are starting, where is it just stopping. They all continues. So if I don't have end of line, but I don't have end of file, it's going to keep reading behind it. So it can pass after the file. If I don't have the character of end of the file, then it's going to read things after it. So somewhere, somehow, it has to know to stop. And that's where I'm going to tell it to stop. Otherwise, it's not going to stop. It's going to keep going. So some of the things coming up with the namespace is uh, arguments on that one that uh, that should be there uh, all over the place. Everybody should have it. Uh, some programs don't have it. Some programs have it. So they say to put it in the function. So when we're moving our function, we can have the namespace in there. But the problem with that is if I have a global namespace and I put it in a function, there are some compilers that are going to complain about it. So that's going to be a problem. Uh, that's what the what the namespace is talking about. The easy sh solution is to place the using directive at the beginning of the file, and uh, <coughs> some people don't like that, but that's the easy fix for now. So the raw data is available to you to put all the the files that you need for the programs to create uh, for chapter six. So 6.6 .6 has a good example for you to do your assignment. So we need the I.O. manip. We can pass the files through the parameter for the function. We have a typical template for reading and writing to file. We have to have these fails in there to, to be sure that I can open my file and I can read it. So formatting, we're reading there from this file, we're going to format it and put it in another file. Okay? So that's uh, one way of doing it uh, for the assignment that's uh, coming up to removing your spaces. You can do it this way to remove the spaces. So while we be able to read from it, so we're going to keep reading it, we're going to do the set w field width, and then we're going to do uh, next and then uh, we're going to put the knit file the same thing. So we're going to do it on the screen and we're going to do it on the file. So if I had it like this, it's going to display like that. So that's one way of doing your uh, assignment. Remember that these conclusions is going to be in your test, and your final is going to be on the Monday, not next Monday. <laughs> the 
Monday of the final week. <laughs> Wednesday you can go home and relax. Uh, you want to come back here? You can come back here. I don't think I'm going to be here. <laughs> I might be grading your papers. So if you want to come in, I come to But technically, if you have a class, uh, the, the, the way that they set up the finals is to be sure you're not overlapping with another class. So most likely that another test, another final is going to be on Wednesday. So the way that they schedule it, so they don't want to overlap. So you should know that, you should know this, and let me know if you have any questions. Okay, next topic is about character I.O., okay? This is another uh, part of your assignments that uh, you're going to be doing. Uh, so I can read the number as a character, okay? So if I have 10. I can read it as a character. If I read one character, it's going to be just one. And then I'm going to read another character that's going to be zero. Single code means one character. This is not a number. I cannot add or subtract from it. This is just a character. Okay, there is a big difference between the character one and number one. If you look at the ASCII code, they are in different places. So the reason we need this is early on, some of you were asking, okay, if I'm asking for a number and my user put a character, what I'm going to do? Or vice versa, if I'm looking for a character and they put a number. So one way of doing it is read one character and then figure out if that is a character or is a number. If it's a number, then maybe I put it back and read the whole number. If it's a character, maybe I want to do something with it. So that is a possibility of reading uh, the input to see what it is. So there are some functions available to these things. So we can uh, do the input and output. Remember, this is going back to the classes and objects. We have the object for this. Uh, for, for the C in, C out, we have objects that we have some functions related to those objects that we can use and for this one we have some functions that we can use for the character uh, do not perform automatic uh, conversions allow you to do input and output in any way you can uh, device so we, I talked a little bit about the, the member function that be belongs to the objects we talked about the objects and classes in this chapter you will gonna go to the details of that in uh, 3A if you guys take taking the 3A, hopefully in the fall. Uh, so we're talking about the difference between getting a single character and we're seeing uh, the extraction operator. Extraction operator is gonna go over the spaces. So instead of using that, we're gonna be using C in dot get. C in dot get is just take one character. Okay, so one character is going to include the end of the file. It's going to include the end of the line. So this is the new line character, backslash n. We put it in for the C out, but when we're reading it, we don't see it. So when we ask the user, please enter a number and uh, push enter, the enter key is going to create this backslash n for us. That's the end of the line. We don't see it, but it is in there. So if I use the extraction the, the thing, it's going to uh, stop before this. So the example of using this, and remember this is because it's dot get, it's going to read only one character. So we're going to open a file, we're going to start reading one character, one character at a time. Okay, now, this is something that I think is going to be very important for your test. I'm reading three characters over here. I have A, B, C, D. The character 1, character 2, character 3 is what? No, it is the end 
of the line. It says right here. So that's the character three. If I use the extraction, it's going to go over it. So the this type, this type is going to go a step over the end of the line. It's going to escape the new line character. It's called white spaces. New line, uh, any kind of a spaces, it's going to go over it. So this one is going to uh, read uh, and echo a line. Uh, so we're going to read it and you're going to display it. We're going to use the uh, dot get to read the, the symbol or character or whatever we want to call it. We're going to display it and we're going to do this while it's not the end of the line. So we're going to do from the beginning to the end. At the end of the line, we're going to stop. Because I have a do while, it's going to do what? It's going to see out all these things, including the backslash n. Why? Because I'm reading it over here. So I read it. If it's a backslash n, I'm going to uh, print it, and then I'm going to check it to see if it's there or not. I could have it uh, upside down, have a while over here, then I wouldn't have the backslash n. Okay, now. The difference between the single code and double code. I talked about this uh, last time, and we talked a little more about it. The single code is one character. Even though we call it as a backslash n, that is just one character. It is not two characters. Two double code backslash n, it is actually two characters. Because at the end of the a string, we always have backslash zero. Backslash zero or null character is going to define where is the end of the string. We don't see it, but it is there. So meaning that this is just one character, this is two characters. So if I take this as this one, and I try to put it in one character, it's not going to work. This is a string. This is two characters. This is a character, it's just one character. But when I'm doing the CR the statement, they're both going to do the same thing, meaning it's going to give me a carriage return. There is another one called put. This put is uh, the get is going to do what? It's going to get uh, one character. Put is going to put one character. It's just like a C out, but it's going to do one character at a time. So it's going to take a uh, uh, argument as a char, one character, and it's going to put it. So we can put it in a display, or I can put it in a file. So the way it works, I can have the outstream dot put, and we're going to put the uh, uh, character in there. Remember, character is single code. If I put a double code, that's going to be two characters. It's not going to work. It's going to give you a complaint. Okay, this is another thing that you can use. Okay, I want you to pay attention to this. You might, uh, most likely you may need this. When we have, when we read things from uh, input, it's going to go in a buffer. It's going to stay in the buffer. So when we're reading things, sometimes we're going to look ahead. We're going to look at the next character. Or when we're reading, we might be reading something, and then we want to analyze it, and then we want to put it back. So the example that we had earlier, if I had the user to put 10, and I didn't know if the user is going to put a character or a number, I read the first character, that would be 1, and then I check it to be sure it's a number. Now, if I want to read a number, I don't have 10 anymore, I have only 0, because I already read 1. So this put back is going to put it back in the buffer. Now when I read, I can read the 10 as a number. Remember, I'm not going to read it as a character because I don't want to change it. To so changing 10 back in, from the characters to number is going to be a hard thing to do. So the best way is to put the one back. We're going to use the put back as soon as I know it's a number. I put it back. Now I'm going to read the whole number, 10. Is he sleeping over here? Wake up. Wake up. Oh. Okay, so 
this is another one that uh, can be uh, helpful for your uh, removing the spaces uh, for that assignment that you have uh, removing the spaces so we can uh, check to see why we're gonna uh, look at the one and if it's not the space we're gonna do what we're gonna put it in there and then we're gonna read the next one if it's a space we are not gonna do it okay so what's gonna happen we're gonna put it back why we're we gonna put it back because when we have this one we're gonna just go back one time so we're gonna put the space back so this is gonna be another helpful thing for your assignment yes sir why is it putting it somewhere? put is uh, okay uh, f out is what f out is a file that we have so this is putting it into that file Okay, this one is putting it back in the buffer. So my next read is going to read the last one that I had. Doesn't this just read one character of code? As it, what it is reading is, as far as it's not the spaces, I'm going to read characters. So it's going to read characters till it gets to the space, and it's going to stop. So if I have uh, my <coughs> space name, it's going to read my, and it's going to put it in that file. So it's just going to read character, it's going to stop at the space. But because I already read the space, I'm going to put it back. Now I have a space in the uh, in, in my buffer. Yes, sir? Where is the uh, the dot get next to? Okay, so uh, remember in a while we're going to do what? We're going to uh, read first, okay? So we're reading one character here, right? We're checking this character to see if it's a space or not. Right. If it's not a space, we're going to put it in the file. Right. We're going to read it again. Uh, so we're going to read it from... We're going to read it again from what? From this file. Okay. We're reading from this file. Then we're going to do what? We're going to check it again. If it's not a space, we're going to put it in the file. We're going to read it again. We're going to uh, keep doing this till it's a space. Then we're going to stop and we're going to put it back. Yes, sir? Can I use a do-while You can use the do-while. What's the difference with the do-while? You're going to execute it one extra time. Say so this one, if the very first character is a space, it's not going to go through this. Remember, we're going to read it first time. So if the very first character is a space, it's not going to do this. The do while is going to do it no matter what happens to the first character. If you're not concerned about the first character, you can use the do while. Yes, then, sir. Okay, let's say that the first one is 1, right? So we read 1 here. Is it a space? No. We're going to put it in the file, yeah. and then we're going to read the next one. We let's say it's a 0. Okay. We come back. Is it a space? No. Yeah. We're going to put it there. We're going to read the next one, so it's a space. Is it a space? Yes. So we're getting out, but we have a space. So we're going to put the, the space back in the buffer. So next time we read it, then we're going to have a space. Every time we read one character, we're going to go to the next one. That last part. Um, so, say it is a space and we jump out. What is that? Then dot put back. We're going to put back. So, we're going to kind of, we're going to put it in the buffer. F in was what? It's coming in, right? That was my buffer coming in from the file input, input okay. file. Okay? I'm going to put it in the buffer. I'm not going to put it in the file. It's going to go back to the buffer. So, if I have one zero, yeah. I, I do get f in dot get next, okay? I get one zero, right? Then if I say get in next, I'm going to get one, right? So, this is going to give me one. Yeah. My next is going to be one. So, if I do put back, it's going to go back and put that one back. So, the one is going to go back to the buffer. So, if I go back after this and I do c in a number, it's going to read 10. If I don't put it back, I already read 1, and if I do a, a C in a number, it's going to give me 0, because I already read 1. Does that make sense? Okay. So 
one of the reasons that we want to do this is going to be the checking the input to see if the input is correct and if it's correct we can uh, uh, use it if it's not correct we don't use it so if I have, I'm expecting a character I can check it and then if it's a character I'm going to check it to see if it's a Y or a lowercase Y and if it's not a character it's a number I put it back and I read it and do something else with it So we can check for the end of the uh, line. Uh, there is a character for end of line, uh, or we can use the backslash and either way. So we have here creating a sum symbol. We're going to read, we're going to by the dot get, so we're reading one character. And as far as it's not backslash n, we're going to keep reading. Okay, so this is going to do what? It's just going to keep reading till it gets to backslash n. So a lot of you are uh, using this already. So, we can now use any kind of a character. So, if we are expecting a number, we can check it to see if it's a character. And if it's a character, we can uh, just check it to see what it is. Yes, sir. You just change it to a string. So instead of the uh, answer to be one char, you're going to change it to a string. And then you're comparing the string, you can do that. That's not a problem. Then you can check to see if it's a YES. But remember, if the YES, they have to be exact match. Or I'll show you how to change it to uppercase, lowercase. Because if somebody put a capital Y, E, lowercase E, lowercase S, and you're looking for lowercase Y, E, S, then it's not going to be a match. That's a good one. Let me show you how we're going to do that. In two slides, I'll tell you, I'll tell you how we're going to change that. Okay, so the question is how we're going to do a lowercase, uppercase, uh, and it's coming up. All right, so this is a very, very important thing. Somebody talked to me, actually, it was Ben the, today about it, uh, and this is very important. When we're mixing up the C in with the dot get, we're going to have extra character that you might not be able to see. Okay? So, when you are using C in, it's going to read, this is a very, very important line. It's going to read up to the backslash n, and it's going to stay there. So, in the buffer, we have end of line. C in does not read the end of line. Okay? So, it has read something before end of line. Be, the reason it uh, doesn't care for it because next time around it's going to skip over end of line. C in skips over any kind of a spaces, any kind of end of line. So the end of line is in the buffer. Now if I read the dot get, what's going to happen? The C in dot get is going to go read the backslash n. So if I mix them up, all of a sudden you see that you have C in dot get is not giving you what you wanted because it's going to go back to the buffer, it's going to read the end of line. So you have to use something like ignore, or you just got to read it and do something with it, because you're going to have an extra character at the end if you mix them up, if you use the C in and C in dot get, and basically what we're saying is, if C in dot get comes after C in, there is a potential of having an extra backslash n in the buffer that we have to handle. Right, Ben? Yeah. So, we are using a C out. Now we're reading a number.
okay? When I'm reading a number, what's going to happen? The uh, user is going to put a number, is going to put the carriage return. Now enter a letter, and then we have a char, and we're reading the symbol. So we're expecting to read a character, but that's not the case because the carriage return has been in the buffer over here, so basically it's going to read the carriage return. It's not reading a number. This is what the user puts. This is what we have. So after this scene, we have to read this one uh, backslash and we have to discard it before we start reading something else. When we're mixing it up, after scene, if I have a scene.get, I have extra character, I have to handle that one. So either I'm going to do two of these things, I'm going to do scene.ignore, so ignore the, the, the buffer, or I can use the scene.flush to flush my buffer. I have to handle my buffer before I do this. Which one did you use? Okay. So what's your question? How do you okay, so ignore it seems to move forward and throw out the next one? How do you throw out the one that the interrupt is holding currently? The ignore is gonna ignore the current one and it's gonna move on. You can use a flush. It's gonna flush up the whole uh, buffer. Whatever's in the buffer is gonna flush up. You can use that one too. So another uh, fix is uh, we're going to do a new line. That was the one that uh, we created earlier, the function new line that was going through whatever is left. And we're going to uh, find the, uh, you remember that function? It was from the display 6.7. So it would read up to the backslash n, and that's going to do it. So how are we going to find the end of the file? Remember, there is a character end of the file to say that this is the end of the file, so we don't go beyond the end of the file. There is two ways of doing it. One of them is to actually use the function EOF. This is going to tell me that I'm in the end of the line, uh, end of the line, end of the file. So that's uh, one way of doing it. My favorite way is when I'm using the extraction uh, the one, I just keep reading till I don't have nothing else to read. So, I can do this, but my favorite would be putting this one inside of here. If I put this one inside of here, I'm going to say while in a stream.get next, it's just going to read it inside here. I don't need this anymore. So, this one and that one, I can put it in here. And it's going to keep reading it till I don't have any more to read. So, I can put that one in here, and I say while in a stream that get next. It's going to be doing it right here. Or I can use this one, doesn't matter. To me, the other one is a little less writing. So there is two ways of doing it. If I can do it uh, this way, so I'm reading the uh, next one, uh, keep the reading it, or I'm going to be using it uh, uh, EOF the file. So the, which one do we use? Uh, basically what it says is an input is treated as a text and using a member function get to read input. Uh, in general use the extraction operator method when processing uh, numeric. So we're going to use this for number, we're going to use this for characters or a string. That's the general rule of thumb. So we're going to be having this example that's going to be uh, going to a file. It's going to take any any capital C that it sees and it's going to change it to C++. So we're opening uh, two files, one for reading in, one for writing, and then we're going to be looking for capital C. So the function is going to call add plus plus, f in is the file in, f out is file out. Once again, you have to have a comment on the top of your program and for every functions that you're creating. So, we are going to have our in stream and out stream coming in. Remember, we need the ampersand for them to be sure that we are using them as a reference to a file. 
So we are using while not in uh, stream.eof. So this is my input file. I'm going to be reading it till I get to the end of the file. So I'm checking to see if my character is single code C. If that's the case, I'm going to put the C++ in there. I cannot use the put because this is more than one character. And if it's not C, I'm just going to put the next one into the file. So it's going to go through here and it's going to just take the C and change it to C++. Yes, sir. So the character functions are available in uh, CC type, and uh, we can use that one for the character uh, uh, one. And, uh, so we're going back to what he was asking earlier. Uh, he was asking if I have a certain character, I don't want to check for the lowercase, uppercase. One way of doing it is change everything to either uppercase or lowercase. So uh, if I'm asking for Y or lowercase Y, uppercase Y, I can change it to my input to upper or to lower and just check it for either one. So one way that Microsoft dealing with these things is Microsoft is changing everything to upper. So everything is in uppercase, then we don't have to worry about lowercase, uppercase. So one of the functions to upper, we're going to change the lowercase to upper. And remember, it's just one character. Or we could do the static cast char. Another function that's available is called is a space. That's the one you're going to be using for your assignment. It's checking to see if this is a space. And if it's a space, I'm going to do something with it. Otherwise, I'm just going to put whatever is up. So I'm checking it to see if it's a space. The word is, is a space. It's going to return true if it's a space, and it's going to return false if it's not a space. So we have two upper, two lower. We have is upper, is lower to check it to see if the character is uppercase or lowercase. Is alpha is checking for alphanumeric. Actually, alpha, not alpha. Uh, then, uh, let's see. So, it's looking for alpha. We're looking for is digit. We can check to see if it's digit. We can check it to see if it's a space. Those functions are available in pound include CC type. So, you should be able now to write a code that will read a line of text and echo the line with all the uppercase letters detected. We're checking for uppercase <coughs> only. So let's see how you guys are going to do this in your test coming up for the final. Describe two methods to detect the end of uh, input file and why the spaces. Okay. Now, I was uh, working with uh, one of your classmates about how to remove the spaces. Uh, we were working on it. Uh, what did you put it in the blackboard? Email. Now you want me to open the email in front of everybody? 